said, uh, what's your home? I was, I was going to stop by. Okay, why, why would you stop by Don's at 2.30 in the morning? Because I was going down, I was, I was getting that for right. closure. And then I seen the cop and I was walking in that yard. Okay. Not the door like I was there, so I went walking the street, but it shouldn't Number one, a bad drug addict and an even worse liar. I want to know if you can get your shoes up. My shoes? Yeah. You going to give me a pair to wear? Well, do you have another pair? No, it's the only pair of shoes I got. It's the only pair you don't got no more Take to have. Take off the shoes, guys. On May 8, 2019, Riley Crossman, who lived with her mother, Chantel, and her mother's boyfriend, Andy McCauley, mysteriously disappeared. She was last seen alive when she had gone to bed the night before. She She's not mad at me. She was, she mad at me for, for getting high. She was like, we wouldn't have been out at 2 in the morning. And we wouldn't have to go three steps. And I wouldn't even be back. I'll be search, search for her right now. And I'll be stuck in here for two hours. And she'll be out there looking for her. You know? During the investigation, it became apparent that Andy McCauley exhibited signs of nervousness and inconsistency in his statements to the police. Initially, he stated that he had left for work before Riley would have woken up, and Chantel had also left for work early. Friends of Riley suggested that she might have been scared of Andy, although this seemed perplexing, given that Riley's phone and purse were found in her room, and she was known to always have her phone with her. I was at the other house. Okay. I went and got some, we went to got some, I went and got some more drugs. Okay. Well, how do they know to randomly meet you in a parking lot? Well, they never, they didn't know to randomly meet me in a parking lot at all. In subsequent interviews, Andy's account of the events shifted, and he disclosed that he had left the house around 2 a.m. on foot to purchase drugs from his dealer. And then what happens? We got home, and Chantel says Raleigh's missing. Okay. And all that whole thing is Okay. What if I told you that I know you weren't that snow pill, and you didn't buy drugs off anybody that day? We went from this story to this story, and now we're gonna get a third story. There's nothing I can think of. Oh, she would be mad at me for, or she would be upset at me, or uh, scared of me, or anything with me. Can you go in that room? No. Oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah. They're gonna bring the dog up to sniff around, see if they can get a, a trail okay. for him. But I wouldn't mind talking to you for a minute if you got a minute. Yes. Yeah. Tommy, you, you saw her. Oh, uh, like nine. Maybe tennis at night. Yeah, and and what we'll, and what we'll context was that? Oh, uh, she was here in the house with me. Well, grandma was here till like seven. Okay, I think it was seven seven thirty. She left. Okay, a lot of kids were here out with me. Right. Uh, she was at work till ten. I think it was. She got home. Okay. Nine thirty, ten o'clock. She got home. Okay. And what time did she go to bed? Me. No, the girl. Uh, she went to bed probably. Well, I don't know what time she went to bed, but she was. All the kids were in the room by like 9 30, 9, 9 30. Okay. So the kids actually were here. Me, Ryder, Ryder's here, Riker was here, I was there. Okay. And she was upstairs. She went upstairs. That's the last you saw her. Yeah. Did you see her leave in the morning? No. I left four I got up four o'clock in the morning. Left five. Okay. To go to work. Yeah, where are you working at now? With Howard and uh Martin Berg on construction. Okay. Um You was at the mom round. Yeah. Kind of argument here last night. No. Or I mean the night before no. anything. Any no. reason she would leave? No. Okay, because the rumor was going around, people were telling us that she was afraid to come home. I don't know if that's, I mean, you know how people go sometimes. But that was nothing enough. like that. Okay. So, she, she wouldn't have to be her, I mean, they're, right. they ain't like that. They yeah. Like, never like that. He says, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Her mom wasn't even home. Right. She's at work. No, you. You. They said that she got an argument no. with you and, no, 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 and no. didn't want to come home. No. So, I don't know. She was, she was, her, you can ask your grandma, she was here. Doing dishes and, and everything. Her grandma was here until seven thirty. Okay. Uh, Debbie. Right. Yeah. Everything okay. was, every was cool. Um. Anything, man. Anything, anything that can help us. Yeah, can help yeah, us. If I had something to help you, I'd be doing it, brother. You know what I mean? Okay. So we're waiting on her to get back now, so we can go do this. Okay. Stuff for her and everything. So, sometimes it's part of our process. Yeah. Somebody comes missing like this to ask everybody to take a polygraph oh, yeah, just to make sure. Yeah. You're good with that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. No problem. You know what I mean? We just have to bring somebody in. So. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, anything. All right. Good. Anything okay. else, brother? Okay. I appreciate it. Thanks. You know that. Additionally, a polygraph test conducted on Andy yielded inconclusive results, later attributed to his substance abuse issues. The investigation continued with this new information, 
as law enforcement sought to unravel the mystery of Riley's disappearance. This is the interrogation. At 2.30 in the morning, I don't know what to say. I'll drive. Changing, oh. let me drive. I'll 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 drive. i Four o'clock. Mm-hmm. So you made it back to the house by four. Yeah, like I said, literally, I was right, right there. I'm back. I went there. I woke. I was supposed to get up at four o'clock. I woke up two thirty, feeling like shit. So I had it. Okay. I went and got something that I wanted to get before I left to work. Four o'clock. Well, they, I look up. I get up at four o'clock. Leave five. Okay. I mean, she, okay. she, she was there. Yeah, I was to, 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 to look at terms of. Do you know for a fact? No, that's, that's, why, that's why I said no. Yeah. That's why I said no because I, I mean, you know assume she's there. Yeah, that's why I said no because but I. But you also assume she went to her room. Yes. You don't know for a fact. Did you go in and talk to her? I didn't go in. Did you see her come her out? I'm not sure. I see her some door in her room, but she went there. But you're downstairs. How did you see her show? I was upstairs at first. We, I said, okay, that's what you've not. It was all upstairs. Yeah, we yeah, she, we, we, she did the dishes. Then she did the fold the clothes, and, and then uh, she went to her room. I went downstairs. Ryder, because Ryder and Ryder kept on in the room. Upon examining Andy's phone records, the police uncovered a series of calls and text messages sent to a family friend named Don Morgan at 2.30 in the morning. In these messages, Andy expressed notable anxiety and concern, urgently requesting a place to stay for a few hours and alluding to a pressing matter he needed to discuss. I gotta ask you this. What were the texts between you and uh, uh, Don, the guy that... Morgan. That was text? Mm-hmm. It just happened. Just, uh, was your home? I was, I was going to stop by. Okay, why, why would you stop by Don's at 2.30 in the morning? Because I was going down, I was, I was getting bad. Right. The closure, and then I seen the cop, and I was walking in that yard. Okay. And knocked the door like I was there, so I went walking the street, but shit was like. So general police on patrol, you remember talking about Do you remember which vehicle it was? No. Uh, City? Deputy? Don's up. Don, Don's up on Ewing Street. Yeah, right. That's okay. probably what it was. Don's right up there. There's a state cop up there, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The vehicle right there. Okay. So you're sort of ditching away. I mean, you see. Yeah. No, he don't do drugs or nothing. I just seen the cop, and I was wondering, he, he don't know how to do drugs either. Not, he would if you'd met him up to have a cop. Yeah, I probably would have, but I was just trying to get. I seen the cop car. One of the texts was something like you need to talk to him about something. Oh yeah, about the AC about uh I talked to him about it. It's, uh Howard, my cousin Howard, he works for Robin. No, I was just that was just an excuse to stop by there. But I was that's all the cow that was that was my excuse. Well so you'd already bought him there. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was on me. Yeah, it was on me. I seen the same cop car and I went there. You know? Andy's late-night drug run initially raised suspicions, but it was his behavior the following day that drew police attention. He claimed to have gone to work with two other men and worked with them all day. However, what he didn't mention was that in the middle of the workday, he suddenly told his co-workers he had to leave. Oddly, he took their work vehicle, a green pickup truck. What made this even more peculiar was that Andy didn't have a driver's license and was not known to drive. This left investigators puzzled. Andy didn't return with the work vehicle for over four hours. And during this time, neighbors reported seeing the same green pickup truck parked near Andy's home. These actions made the police suspect his involvement in Riley's disappearance. They told you, you're here on your own free will. You can leave at any time. You understand that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm Corporal Evers, the safe place. I don't. Think so. No, not too bad. Pretty much here to go over. Probably asked you a million times on some things, and there's some new things. Yeah. He knows Berkeley County. I don't. I can't think of the name of the Taylor. Taylor Stations. Yep, that's it. Taylor States. The Taylor States. Yep, that's okay. it. Yep. All right. So who's all working that job site? You and. Uh, 
Does anybody else just you two do it? Just that day. Okay. What was your role that day? Like, what's your job duties? Just we got we going in. We're doing a uh, trim. Okay. The final trim. We're going in to do shoe mold, base, cabinets, the cow shelving, door handles, all that. Okay. So y'all do that. Do y'all have a typical lunch time? Is it like when you feel like it or eleven twelve? Whatever you feel like, right? How long do you normally eat lunch? About an hour. Round okay. outs. And then you go back to work? You go back to work. Or you just stay at the same job site? What time do you normally get home? I think I got home five thirty. I think I got home about thirty sixties. Is that what time you got home that day? Yeah, normal. So y'all sound like, just so I understand, you're a tabler, you're doing your thing, you're doing trim, doing all that kind of good stuff. Y'all take your lunch at around 11, 11 12-ish, 12, yeah. something like that. Y'all, y'all eat in the truck, like physically inside the cab, yeah. not in the back of the bed or anything yeah. like that. So you, you pack the sandwich, you say roast beef? I just talked to Johnny, right? We saw him leaving. Okay. Would you be surprised if he told me something completely different? Okay. Um, this is one of these times you need to really sit down and think about what you're going to say. Okay. Because mm -hmm. um, what he told me is complete opposite of what you just said. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, so do you want to rethink what you just told me? One thing I'm going to not do to you is lie to you. Mm -hmm. I promise you that. Mm -hmm. I will never lie to you. Yeah. I'm not going to make up shit. Yeah. Okay? Don't do that to me. I'm not trying to. Okay, okay. You're not trying to. Let's try this again. Let's go back. I know it's been a couple of days. I know a lot has happened. Okay, I get that. I understand that. Let's go back to Wednesday morning. Let's go through this again and tell me what happened. I think the rest of the day. Okay. I think the rest of the day. Okay. Were you at that house the entire time fixing the shelves? No. Okay, where were you at? I was at we had, I was at the other house. Okay. I went and got some we went to got some I went and got some more drugs. Okay. Well how do they know to randomly meet you in a parking lot? Well they didn't know they didn't know to randomly meet me in a parking lot and call them that day. Okay. And you're not right. listening, but you're not being honest. Okay, you're not being honest with us. I know but the, but the drugs uh, all right. I can't. I don't want to give give people's names out. We're not arresting people. You know I mean? We're not here to arrest anybody I'm for drugs. Drug dealers on this one, okay? Yeah. What I tell you before, Riley, Riley, or drug dealers. Yeah. I would like to hope that in this hand you see your drug dealer friends, and over here is Riley. But yet these people here, I want to close up and yeah. protect. Okay. Well, no, I don't want to protect them. Just... So you're down there for about an hour and a half mm -hmm. for him to come. And you get your stuff, you use your stuff, and then you go back to the job. Yeah. Okay. And then what happens? We work the rest of the day. Okay. And then what happens? We went home. Okay. And then what happens? We got home. The Chantel says Raleigh's missing. Okay. And then all at home is loose. Okay. What if I told you that I know you weren't that snow pill and you didn't buy drugs off anybody that day? See what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. Okay. We went from this story to this story, now we're going to get a third story. Okay. This is one of these times you really need to think of what you're telling me. Okay. Because you're not being honest. Remember what I told you about being honest? Yeah. And I'm not going to just throw shit at you. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not here to do that to you. I'm not uh, going to insult you in any way, shape, or form. Please don't do that to me. Yeah. Okay. I know you weren't there. Okay. I know you didn't buy drugs off your cousin, and I know you didn't use them in that parking lot that day. Okay. Where did you go when you left? Went to my house to get the drugs. Okay. I already had them in my house. Okay. I already told you to tell. Okay. So, I just want to tell you I had them in my house. So you left to drive back to get drugs mm -hmm. to come back to your job site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where was she at when you went home? Who? Chantel. She's at work. Okay. So nobody's home at that time? Nobody. Okay, where are drugs at in your house when you go back to get them? Outside. Outside. Where at? Outside. Whereabouts outside? Right there by the, you go to my, my little, there's a shed, you go to my little porch, 
there's a little, there's some bits, frames in there, brown bit frames behind there. Okay. So you go back home, you use your drugs, and then you go back to work, and then what? That was it. That was it. Andy initially claimed he left to meet a drug dealer at a local gas station. He said he had to wait nearly two hours for the dealer to arrive. However, he later changed his story, saying he went home to get the drugs and then returned to work for the rest of the day. This might explain why he was at his house, but it doesn't account for the four-hour gap. The detective presented another piece of evidence. Riley wore glasses, and her glasses were found in her bedroom. What's unusual is that people with poor eyesight usually wear their glasses when leaving home. This suggests that Riley was likely taken out of the home against her will. So I'm telling you that. And I'm also telling you she doesn't have glasses on right now. Okay. And I'm also telling you that somebody that leaves a house to go somewhere puts the glasses on. Yeah. Okay, which is telling us that she probably didn't leave that house by herself. Okay, the glasses were left there, is what I'm getting at, is what I'm telling you. Okay. Okay, so why would somebody do that? I what would make somebody leave a house and forget something that's, to me, just as vital as a cell phone nowadays? Uh, she would have her glasses on. She, but she don't leave the house without her glasses on. Okay, did you see her leave the house? No. Then how do you know she had her glasses on? That's what I'm saying. She would have her glasses on. Well, that, that's, that's what I'm getting at. Okay, so for her to leave that house... You know that. You're telling me that. She would have her glasses yeah, on. she would. Okay. So what happened this time that she doesn't have them on? I don't know. I don't know if she didn't have the glasses on. You know, do you see where I'm getting at with that? Somebody's not going to put themselves in a situation where they're going to wander out and not have glasses on. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, which makes us believe that, you know, she had some help getting outside. Okay. I'm just telling you the whole part about you being honest. I'm being honest with you. I've been honest with you. I told you shit that I didn't even want to tell you. Okay. You're being somewhat honest. I mean, we're doing some pulling to get some information about some drug activity, yeah. which is us. I don't even give two shits about. But yet we're having trouble pulling that out of you. Because I was worried about the people named out there. Okay, and I, and I told you I don't care about that. I didn't say that. You told us about the drug activity, what, two nights ago? No, I did. Did I, I arrest I, you I for it? You didn't do anything. Yeah. What do you and Chantel talk about? What she thinks going on? I mean, really, it's just, we don't really know. We just, I mean, y'all gotta talk a little bit. I don't think, I mean, there's a lot going on, but, man, what's she telling you? We haven't been talking crazy much about it. It's just, just what we've been looking. Uh -huh. How'd she feel about you going to get heroin that night? She was not happy about it. How'd she feel about you? Going back to the house and getting cocaine. We were happy about it. You know, the further this rolls out, you know, we're doing this, you know, she just didn't disappear, right? Yeah. Right. Well, I know she, there's no way she could have been home by now. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, the further along this is, whatever happens, and whoever did this to her, the worse off it gets for that person, too. Yes. I hope so. Okay. Um, so like I said, I know you came in here and you're trying to help the cause, you're trying to talk in, um, but like, understand we're doing our thing and the more time that goes on, um, like I said, she's just not paying Yeah, of okay. course. Um, and like I said, we're fairly certain she just didn't wander out of the house by herself and uh, took a nature hike somewhere. Um, you know, we're fairly certain that she was basically taken out of that house by somebody, okay? Uh, we have very strong reason to believe that. Um, so like I said, we have a very limited area in your home and a very limited amount of people that come in and out of your house. Yeah. Okay. Um, so like I said, she just didn't up and disappear. No, I don't do that either. Yeah. No, nobody does. I'm just, you know, just saying that. She just didn't up and disappear and uh, back her shit and roll out and go. Um, you know, there are certain things, you know, especially the teenager to uh, have a phone with her. Um Maybe she had that with her. Maybe somebody wanted to have that phone with her, so that phone disappeared too. Okay. 
really convenient that her friends with her, her friends missing, uh, which is pretty vital for a teenager, all of her communications. And um, maybe there's hidden communications that somebody didn't want somebody to see, but that friend is conveniently gone now. Mm -hmm. um, but yet her glasses are still at the house, and there's other important things at the house that um, a teenager would take. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, she was probably taken out of that house by somebody. Yeah, I feel, I feel something that she was taken that way, I feel. Because yeah. she would be on by now. She would yeah. be mom. She was the taken from that house, is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, she, didn't, she didn't wander off. Okay. She just didn't go out and wander down the road at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock the next day. She just didn't do that. Okay. Um, she didn't pack a bag and take her clothes, take her glasses, take a cell phone charger, um, take all of her money. She had most of her money. Um, someone's going to go. Yeah, her money was still in the book bag. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, like I said, if someone's going to run away or do something, they're going to make a little bit better effort. Um, even for a fifteen-year-old, for a fifteen-year-old kid, they're going to at least have the necessities. Would you agree? I agree. Okay, they would have their clothes. They would have their money. Um, they would sure as hell have a cell phone charger with them, and they would sure as hell have their glasses with them. Okay. Um, so, with that said. Um, that's why we're getting back to she was taken from that house, okay? And whoever took her out of that house didn't think to take those important things. And I'm, I'm telling you. Okay, you understand when I have to talk to you? Yeah, I understand. So I talk to you why I'm here. Okay. Why well, I've been here every time you ask me to be here. I don't you? do nothing with the kid. So where is she? I don't know. If I knew, I would have her home for her mother. This is starting to get... I don't know who this kid is. If I did, I would, I would have her home. They got to have a drug problem. That has nothing to do with this case. The only way you guys keep pushing and pushing. It has nothing to do with Rob. My drug problem it has nothing to do with Rob. Yeah, it sucks. It does have. It does fall back. Yeah, I'm her, her stepdad. I shouldn't be doing drugs. Yeah, I understand all that. But that has nothing to do with Rod missing. You know what I'm saying? That had nothing to do with Rodney and Nessa. Me doing drugs. I don't understand why you guys keep pushing that. What has, what, what has to do with messing with her? I don't know what, why, why she's missing. I have no clue. If I did, we, we have her home. I mean, we've been looking for the kid. I, and I'm wasting time being here when I should be out looking for her. You guys should be out looking for her. Have you been out looking for her? Yes, we've been out looking for her. We've been, we've been everywhere. Okay, where have you been? We've been to the cave, we've been to Cool Farm, we've been down down this girl Kayla today already. We've been up and down in, through town, all the way down through the cave. We've been everywhere looking for her. We had her mother, and then we had our, class, our grandfather today was out looking for her. Okay. Yeah. I don't understand why you guys keep bringing drugs up. It doesn't have anything to do with Raleigh. Well, we both have seen drugs do bad stuff to people. I've never seen drugs do cause suicide. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I've seen I've seen I've multiple seen people be killed over drugs. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen, seen a bad drug deal or something. I've seen multiple home invasions where people get shot, stabbed. Yeah, I understand that kind of stuff. stuff. I understand that kind of stuff, but not over drugs. Not doing drugs. I'm not from, yeah. doing drugs. I'm going to kidnap my kid and from people harm her drugs. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, I'm not making this up. I'm telling you, this is what I've seen. Well, I'm telling you right now, no drugs ever really be on my kids. I've been, I've been, I've been a drug addict since I was 28 years old. I've never harmed anyone. And I've been through the dirt, been through, been through the shit. I've shot it. I've fucking done it all. I've never harmed anyone. I've never you know, harmed anyone. You look at my record. Only thing I, I might have, I've never even heard, I've never even stole anything to get drugs. You know, I have no criminal record like I have a criminal record by selling drugs and then I get caught with drugs. I'm not stealing, not harming people. Never ever in my life have I harmed anyone. She vanished, but what I'm saying is there's certain things that are just way out of line. Yeah. The dog is a real big thing yeah. to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, somebody, somebody did not come into your home and take her out of that house. If, if, some, if something happened in that house, that dog would have woke. Every one of us up. Exactly, if the person wasn't supposed to be in the No matter who it was. Okay. If, I, if I were to do something right, that dog would have woken everybody in the house. That dog would not let anyone harm anyone in that house. If somebody would come in there and do something to me, if one of the kids were trying to harm me in that house, 
that dog will go off. Even that Chantel, that dog will not let anyone get harmed in that house. No one. Me, Chantel, Riley, Riker, Ryder. None of us, nobody can harm anyone in that house. You're going to harm each other. Nobody come in the house and harm you. That dog will not let anything happen to anyone. All right, unless the incident was a, wasn't a very announced one. You know, I'm not talking about banging shit and slamming tables and yelling and screaming. It could be a very um, subtle incident where a dog's not going to pick up on that. I guess. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I saying guess. I'm not saying someone coming in and breaking shit and you know throwing MS out and yelling and screaming. I guess. But if it's a subtle incident where there's not a lot of commotion, a dog might not pick up on that. Another piece of evidence in their possession was that Riley had confided in her boyfriend, expressing her fear of Andy. During a FaceTime call with him, she disclosed that Andy was in her room, which left her frightened. The detectives intended to confront Andy with this information. They wondered what he would say if they revealed that Riley's last text to her boyfriend urged silence because she still had to FaceTime while Andy was present in her room. What if I told you her last text to her boyfriend were saying, don't talk? because she still has to face time with Andy's in here. I'm afraid. That's what I said. What if I told you that? Obviously, that's crazy. 100%. Obviously, that's crazy. There's no reason why I would ever be scared of me. She, she never was scared of me, ever. I can, I can put my hand on the Bible and tell you I saw those texts today. Well, I like to see him because I know probably he ain't scared of me. I know I know she was not only that, she said you were in here and she was in her bedroom because the FaceTime was still on. Mm -hmm. I was never in her room. That's not what she's saying. No, I don't know. I was never in her room. I don't go in her room. Once in a while I would go in her room, but not not only ever. Then why would she say that? I don't know. Unless she wasn't in her room. She might have been in my room full of clothes at that point. No, this is way past your non thirty time frame. I was downstairs at after nine thirty, so Andy, I'm not lying to you. I don't know what to tell you. Like I don't know. I was not in a room for one. And for two, the kid's not scared of me. There's no reason for her to be scared of me. I've been there for in for a year and a half. Take care of her, give her these meetings. But what we're saying. Like, I get that, I hear you, but what we're saying is she, that's what she's saying. So obviously, obviously to her, she's afraid of something. I hear what you're saying, like, I, I don't understand it, I don't get it, I, I, I totally get that, but for some reason she is, and she's saying that, and I told you that a while back. There's no way, there's no way you can ask your mother, her mother will tell you that it's not true. There's, there's no I'm way. telling you, I read that with my own eyes no. today. I don't know. I know so you see where that puts us. Yeah, I understand, but I, the kid's not scared of me. I don't understand how you guys can say that. That she's not. That's your well, grandmother. That's, that, that's what she is saying. She's saying that's why we're saying that. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors when, you know, you and Chantel are there, or Chantel and Riley are there, or all three of you are there, or just you and Riley, or Riley and the two kids. You know what I'm saying? We're not behind closed doors. We don't know, uh, you know, situations, who goes what. Uh, we don't know, okay? But obviously, in her mind, she's afraid of you. No. Would you agree it doesn't make sense? It doesn't make sense at all. So does she have any reason to say that? No. Then why would she say that? Oh, no. Has she been hateful towards you? Does no. she hate you? No. She don't hate me. She loves me. That's so I'm asking you. I don't know that. Does she uh, argue with you? No, ever. We have she ever cuss at you, never. curse you out, nothing? Never. never, nothing. In a year and a half, nothing. Okay, so it sounds like to me she does love you so heartedly. Yes. Okay, so why would she say that? I don't know. In a year and a half, we have not had one conflict. Okay. Well, me and the boy, yeah, we have. Okay, but there's never been anything, like you said, a year and a half or the last several weeks, several nothing. months, several nothing. days, nothing that's... Nothing. You were like, oh yeah, I forgot about that one time she wanted this and I told her no. Maybe she got mad and she's nothing. You know, her age and she blows it out of proportion. Not that I can say I know, but I remember. Okay. But you see where that puts us, right? Yeah, I understand. I understand what you guys are doing. I'm, I'm not mad that you guys are doing your job. I mean, that's the last message he has from her. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not that you guys are doing the job. I think you're doing the job, but there's nothing I can think of. Because, I mean, her messages are deleted. You deleted all your mess, your messages, you know. But he still has this, and that's the last thing we have. I don't know. I mean, you want us to do our job. That's that's what we're doing. I don't know. I'm asking you to do your job. I'm not bad. You guys don't know. Guys, I think he's a little pissed off. But nothing. There's nothing I can think of. She would be mad at me for or she would be upset at me or like, scared of me or anything with me. You didn't go in that room? No. She still had FaceTime one, too. Okay, well, I was in that room. Before Andy was let go, the police asked for his shoes to run some tests. But Andy didn't take that very well. I want to know if you can give your shoes up. My shoes? Yeah. You want me a pair to wear? Well, do you have another pair? No, it's the only pair of shoes I got. It's the only pair you don't got no more Take the fucking shoes, guys. Take the shoes. You want me to take you home? No, I'll walk home with those shoes. Alright, don't worry. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Is that door locked? Oh, yeah. Alright, All right. check the key. No, he told me to take him home and take his shoes. Oh, okay. The police suspected that Andy had returned to his home to collect Riley's body and transport it elsewhere. Over the following week, the police tracked surveillance footage of Andy's green truck from the moment he left his residence to his final destination, which was more than 28 miles away. Their search led them to the area near the last sighting of the green truck, just off a dirt road. Here, they discovered Riley's lifeless body. Northern West Virginia, where police say they believe they have found the remains of a missing 15-year-old girl. Adjacent to her remains were bolts that matched those found in Andy's tool belt, along with sheetrock dust that was also present all over the back of the green truck. To ensure there was no doubt about Andy's involvement, the police also had footage of him entering a gas station near where the body had been disposed of at the time it would have occurred. Andy McCauley. The boyfriend of Riley Crossman's mother now faces a first-degree murder charge in the death of Riley Crossman, and police say he gave several different versions of his alibi during the eight-day investigation. As a result, Andy was charged, tried, and convicted of first-degree murder, and he was sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison. Number two, babysitter killer. Meet Lindsay Parton a babysitter who looked after her own children and a three-year-old girl named Hannah. Hannah's father, Jason, would bring her to Lindsay's every morning before work and pick her up in the evening. Jason worked in construction and didn't have much money, so Lindsay charged him only $30 a day for babysitting. Jason began to notice that Hannah often came home with bruises on her body but he convinced himself that these bruises were probably from the children playing roughly with each other. On March 8, 2018, Jason dropped off Hannah at Lindsay's for the day. Just a few minutes after leaving his daughter, Jason received a phone call from Lindsay. She informed him that something was seriously wrong with Hannah and that he needed to return immediately. Jason rushed back to Lindsay's home to find Hannah in distress struggling to breathe and unresponsive. I'm saying to myself, there's no way that just falling on that concrete floor made her, I could have swore like this, the head, I, this has been going on, I, I don't understand. Have you seen her come to the house with bruises on her face? Yeah, before the accident yesterday, yes. So she had bruises on her face this week? Yeah. Where? Before she saw the train? Like when I was like right here, and then she had one on her chin. It was one on the chin when she fell on the gravel. That got worse. There was there was one on her chin before that, and then when she fell on the gravel. Like, so there's bruising Yeah, it got worse. Yeah. Hannah was quickly taken to the hospital and placed in intensive care. Lindsay was questioned by the police about what happened. She initially told the detectives that Hannah had fallen on a concrete floor. However, when they started asking more questions about the incident, 
Lindsay promptly requested to speak with a lawyer. I don't want to. Do you want me to give him a call? No, I want to call my lawyer. I just, I, I'm completely, honestly telling the truth, and I would never lie. I don't, I mean, I wouldn't lie to anybody. Yeah. Now, that if you want to call your lawyer, I mean, do you still want to talk to us? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I want to. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What are you doing? This is, this is what you're supposed to be doing, helping us. I'll do anything I can, though. I just, well, we do appreciate it. I really, I am honestly in shock. I don't, it, it was literally 30 seconds to a minute him dropping her off and us walking in the house. Okay. And she cuts. I hadn't even shut the door behind me yet. And she looked at it. <laughs> I have a couple questions I want to ask you. Sure. And hey, listen to me. Yeah. And I don't know if you, since you've been in here talking to them, because I've been meeting with my boss, if you've been talking about an attorney or anything. So I just want to make sure we're, we're because I have a couple more questions I want to ask yes. you. But I want to make sure you are still well aware of your rights. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to go through this. I can, and I realize that you should. Right. Okay, I just want I want to go through them one more time, real fast, okay? Just to make sure I'm yeah. really asking you a couple yes, questions. Of course. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to consult an attorney. If you can't afford one, you want to be appointed for you free of charge. You stop talking to myself or Detective Lambert at any time. Do you understand your rights as I read them to you? Are you okay answering a couple more questions yeah. knowing your rights? Yeah. Okay. Is this, is this your phone? Yes. And you given, this is what we wrote down on the back. Yes. Would you give us consent to look in your phone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can I punch that code I'll, in? I'll do my thing. Do you care if I do it? No. When do you think that 911 call was placed? I don't know. 820? Are you serious? One hour. And 18 minutes later, now, what you've done. That was bad. That is bad. What yeah. you've done is said he was there within, this happened within seconds of him being here. It really and that did. child was there an hour and 20 minutes giving him the benefit Can of the child. Can I look at that real quick? I don't think you're right. Hold on, let me look at my time call. Let's pull up my pull up my calls real quick. Pull up my calls when the 911 was called. Because it was 7:20. Because I looked at the clock, it was that early. Go back to my call book. Hold on. I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah, so my two 911 was called. I called 911 at 7:02. And hit at 701. Well, I'm looking at the cab report, Ron. Yeah. I stand corrected. Yeah. You are right. I, I called right away. I'm like, there's no way that it was an hour. It was right away. I mean, it happened within seconds. Mm. I'm telling the truth. I swear to God I am. I am not lying to you. I do not lie. I would not lie. I would lie. I just don't lie. All right. Anytime. Okay. Upon reviewing Lindsay's phone records, the detectives questioned her about the timing of her 911 call. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. What's going on? Okay, my name is Lindsay. I babysit kids. Yes. And we just dropped her off, and um, all of a sudden she just passed out. Who's passed out? The little girl, she's three. She, she fell pretty bad yesterday. And she's okay. been fine, and then all of a sudden you dropped out this morning, and she walked in, and she kind of passed out, and she went limp. Okay. I don't know. Are you with her now? Yes, and so is her dad. I called her. Yes, her. She's bad. There's something wrong. Okay. Is she awake right now? Yes. No, no, no. Stay on the line with me. I have to ask you two questions while my partner gets the medics dispatched. <laughs> okay. Is she breathing? Yes, in and out. Okay. Yes, in and out. I don't know what's wrong. Okay, is her breathing completely normal? Oh, yeah, it's almost gone. Hurry, please. Okay, lay down on her back. Lay her down on her back and let her head tilt okay, back. Okay, I'm so sorry, but I'm Okay. Is she still unconscious, correct? Yes. 
Okay. Yeah, she's unconscious. She, she, her eyes are open and she's like gasping for air. What's the matter? She's like in shock or something. I don't know what, what could be wrong with her. I don't either. She's a fine. Who just walked in the house? She got up, brushed her teeth. I don't know. Lindsay, Lindsay, it's okay. They're on the way. She just walked in the house and just passed out. Hey. Parkinson. Hey. Look at Daddy. Anna. Look up. Mm. You You're here? okay. I love you. I know. I love you, Buttercup. Hey. Hey, wake up. There we go. They pointed out that she had called 911 more than an hour after Jason had returned to check on his daughter. They were curious about the delay and why she waited so long to seek help. However, the detective soon realized that he had made an error when analyzing the phone records. It turned out that Lindsay had indeed called 911 shortly after Jason's return. Uncertain about their next steps, the detective left the room to confer with other officers. Realizing they lacked further evidence to hold Lindsay, they returned her phone and allowed her to go home. The following day, they asked Lindsay to return for another interview. Yep, exactly where she fell and on her chin. She didn't even, her hand didn't even hit. Like, she just... She, what she was doing, I can show you how she was running, running like this, and then looked back and went like that. Literally. Did she slide? Or? No, it was just bam, bam. Yeah. She came and she got right back up and kept her and I said, hey, are you okay? I'm okay. So, so all these, so all these small little bruises and the ones on the chin. Yes, I know about those right there. And even yes. the one on yes, the chin. Yes, the one on the chin, yep. And the neck. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's all that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I saw it. Yes. Under her chin like that. So. Well, she was extended pretty far. She did, she went like that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But I. I she wasn't on top of anything. She was walking. Well, so what happened? So say this is the door. Yeah. She walks right here. There was like um, you know one of those push cart that you like serving off of. Mm -hmm. It's like a. Yeah, and she fell like that, and she there was a wheel. I think mm -hmm. I think she hit that. Okay. But I don't she know wasn't that. on top of anything. She wasn't climbing. She was yeah, she literally just collapsed. Okay. Yeah, she went right. down. I went down. Yeah, I'm like, well, first I said, Hannah, are you okay? Get up. I thought maybe she like tripped over her pants or something. Because sometimes she'll try to like take off her shoes while she's standing up. Yeah. And she didn't get up, and I'm like, are you okay with up? And she was, like, not saying anything to me. And so I picked her up, and I'm like, you know, I probably shook her. Like, are you okay? And I shouldn't have done that. I don't know. What do you know? I don't know if I shook her. I just was like, are you okay? I was holding her. Like, Hannah, are you okay? And then so I laid her down, and that's when I called Jason. And I said, Jason, she's, there's something wrong with Hannah. She's not waking up. I don't know what happened. She just started. She just walked through the door and collapsed. I said, you need to come up here now. So you, were you holding her? Yeah. Well, no, I was. You were there on the Yeah, yeah. Her down. I wasn't holding her very long, but like okay. I didn't understand why she wasn't coming to you. Like, I did. And you're, you're shaking her to get her to come to you. How are you shaking her? Not shaking her. Just like, Hannah, are you okay? Hannah, are you okay? Hannah, are, are you okay? She's trying like, to wake her. Okay. And she could have. I don't know. I was honestly, well, you know, so I was just coming out of the door and it's all straightforward. You're not going to have. Bruising over here and over here and none in the middle. Yeah. And then bruising over right here and up underneath there, there would have been no bruising. That's a soft spot that your natural your body naturally protects. Yeah. The way your body's well, tucked in, the way your body's tucked in. Um, and that's what that's where we're getting. That's why we wanted you to come down and fill in some of these holes. Yeah. Um, because to me that looks brand new. Oh, okay. That, that is newer than even. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what it kind of looks like is that these are all from a different. Time. Yeah, and like I said, she is well, she is well, I don't, I don't think that she's been, I really don't think that she's been hurt. I, you know? No, I honestly don't, in my gut intuition, I don't think that he's a bad guy. I really don't. I think that he well, is a bad guy. Well, here's one thing that we, that, um, now this is from a senior neurologist. Okay? Yeah. He's telling us that, uh, the, the brain injury that she sustained was absolutely not 24 hours prior or even an hour prior. The injury that caused this, uh, or the incident that caused this brain injury yeah. 
was immediate. The detectives presented their evidence to Lindsay, explaining that an examination of Hannah had revealed a significant head injury due to blunt force trauma. The doctor who examined Hannah had managed to create a timeline pinpointing when this injury occurred. It appeared that the severe head trauma happened right around the time Hannah was dropped off at Lindsay's place. Dad dropped her off, injured this kid to the point where she's unconscious. Or a dramatic fall, or something, or some sort of accident. No, I mean, I believe you, but that accident will drop. Yeah, something, something absolutely happened yeah. while when she walked in the door to the time she fell. That's the time frame that there's no doubt. It's not a question of, well, maybe it happened or anything. There's no doubt. It absolutely happened during this time. And the only person that was there was a couple of kids and you. Yeah. That's what we're running into. So, something. I did not do anything to her. So we're not saying you did No, I know. But no, I honestly, she did. But we're just saying you know, okay? I mean, you, you would have seen her, you saw her collapse. It was immediate that she collapsed. After yes, I mean, you, 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 said, you, walked out the door. you said you, you never lost eye contact with her. With, with the time she walked in, yeah. you followed her in and she collapsed. That's not possible. That's not that's not possible. I believe she walked in. Yeah, she did. My dad, yeah. I believe all that. But as soon as you guys went into the house, something happened. There's no doubt, there's, listen to me, listen to me. There's no doubt that something happened. Something absolutely happened, okay? We're not going back to Wednesday. We're not going back to the morning that Dad had her. We're beyond even that. We've, it's narrowed down by by brain surgeons no, that, that it happened. happened right when, right before she hit the ground. That's, that's when it happened. And you just told us, and you told us several times, that she, you were looking at her. She, it's not like she walked around the corner and you came around and was like, what the hell happened? No, she you had eye contact with her. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That didn't cause her to collapse. She didn't just collapse. Traumatic brain injury. Traumatic. Okay. What accident caused this? She fell out the door and hit the concrete step. When? Thursday morning. Walking into the, walk the house? Yes. Tell us about it. Take us through the details. So when she, I opened up the door, she was coming through and she slipped on that concrete step and the metal part, she hit the metal part on her eye. Which door? The, the one. Door yeah, the yeah one into the house, the carpet. And so I got her back up and she stood up and looked up at me and did say, I want to go not and couch and in class. We appreciate you being honest. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's an accident. I thought it was my fault, and I thought she was having a seizure, and I didn't want Jason to be mad at me, yeah. that she slipped and fell, and I wasn't yeah. holding her, and I was trying to grab her blanket from her. Here's, here's the thing. And I thought it was my here's, fault, here's, she was having a seizure. I thought she was having a seizure. I was scooping on her mouth, and I fell, and she fell. Where, did, where were you at when you fell? Um, against the door, trying to get... Of the door, the door open. I was holding her, and the blanket was kind of like falling because he had handed her to me, and I put her down. And I picked her. No, he put her down, and when he walked out the door, I picked her up with the blanket, and it got tangled up. When I opened up the door, it got tangled, and I slipped. So, are you on the concrete floor? Or are you on the step? Or are you on the top? Side? I was on getting ready. I was trying to step up to go inside. I lost my balance. The blanket got underneath my foot, and we both fell. She smacked her face on that concrete step, and I hit the door. I didn't do that. I don't know. Okay. I really didn't do that. I don't know. How does this happen? I slapped her upside head. With what? My hand. Open, closed? Yeah, open. Well, what, what caused that? She took all of the... I don't know why she was in trouble. She took all the hands around and squirted it into the toilet while oh, I wasn't that's looking. That's frustrating. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. When she looked, I caught her doing the ketchup, you know, I took it away and I 
put her arm on the body, but she had to go pee anyway. I said, Kenny, you can't do the catch up. I just slapped her on the side of the head and went like that. Close. Yeah, like that. How many times? Don't say once. Yeah. Uh, Because it gets the bruise. Yeah. Yeah. Lindsay was arrested and initially charged with child endangerment. However, tragically, Hannah passed away due to her injuries, leading to Lindsay's charge being upgraded to murder. As a matter of housekeeping, before we proceed, I do want to address an issue that was discussed briefly in chambers. Because of the nature of the indictment, we have six indictments, or six counts of the indictments for which uh, there were guilty verdicts. Counts one and two, both felony of the third degree child endangering charges, uh, upon which Ms. Park was found guilty covering events from March 6th to March 7th, 2018, covering the same uh, sequence and series of events. And it counts three through six, one uh, felony three child endangering, one felony one involuntary manslaughter resulting from the previous child endangering, a felony two child endangering in count five, and then an unclassified felony murder in count six, all once again revolving around the same events that took place on March 8, separate and distinct from the events of counts one and two, but the same event for the purpose of those four counts. So uh, the court discussed with the parties the issue of uh, the emerging of allied offenses, and um, I want to make sure I get it journalized on the record. The state, uh, I think, is in agreement. I think the defense is in agreement. The court's position is that counts one and two would be subject to merger as allied offenses. Counts three through six would likewise be subject to murder or to merger as allied offenses. Lindsay pleaded not guilty and took the case to trial, where she eventually admitted to lying about hurting Hannah. She claimed she had lied to protect people she loved. The trial had some compelling evidence against Lindsay, including her police interrogation. Additionally, it was discovered that Lindsay had searched multiple times on Google for ways to hide bruises. The doctor who examined Hannah testified that the severe injury that caused her death couldn't have been the result of a fall or multiple falls. Sentence the defendant Lindsay Parton to a lifetime imprisonment with parole eligibility after 15 years. In the end, Lindsay was found guilty of child endangerment manslaughter, and murder. She was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 15 years. The judge emphasized that the parole decision would be made by the parole authority, and there was no certainty regarding when or if Lindsay would be granted parole. If you enjoy watching our videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel.